Suppose Postgres implements something called as process per user client server model. The core idea is really simple. Every time a client connects to the Postgres server, your Postgres server creates a new process to handle that connection. Now, this means that if there are 10 clients connecting to the Postgres server, your Postgres server is spinning up 10 different processes to handle each of that connection. Right? Now, that is, seems very expensive. It is, but it has its own advantage. Now, Obviously, when a process, uh, when a Postgres server starts, it is listening on a particular port, let's say 5432, one server or sorry, one process can listen to that port. So this main process that is listening to that port is called as a postmaster process. The postmaster process is the main supervisor process that is accepting the connections from the client. When it, when a client connects to it, it forks out a child process to handle that corresponding client. So your client can send a SQL query, it will, the process will take care of executing, doing joins, executing the query, computing the response, sending the response back to the user. And when the connection is closed, the process is terminated. Right? Now let's go through the source code to understand if that is what is really happening behind the scenes. So here to understand it slightly better, I am opening up the source code of Postgres. I'm opening the file called postmaster.c. I'm on the line 1624. There is a function called server loop. This function is the main infinite for loop that is running, which is waiting to accept the client connections. So here we see an infinite for loop and we see the function wait event set wait. <coughs> this is where it is waiting for, or it is evaluating the number of pipes which are ready for an incoming connection. For all of that, when it is accepting the connection, it is and it is okay. It is starting a backend backend process. It's called as, as a backend process. When the client connects, your postmaster creates a backend process for it. If I click on backend startup, I see what this process is doing. In backend startup, it is doing some basic allocations and making a call to postmaster child launch. Postmaster child launch is basically returning the process ID. Here we see something around new process getting fogged out. So Postmaster Child Launch gets that this is a type of backend process, gets the startup data and the, the socket connection so that the child process can now use the socket connection to do whatever it wants to do. In the Postmaster Child Launch code, let's see what's written. In the Postmaster Child Launch code, code we see that scrolls just like below, we would see for process happening. Oh, where did it go? Here, for process happening. So this is where postmaster child some assertion happened and for process happened. What is this for process? For process is about forking the process. It is an abstracted method which is written in file for process.c under postmaster, which is doing nothing, just some basic checks, timers, uh, stats around that, and it basically does a final fork of it. Where did the code go? Here is the final fork that it does. Right. This is where this tells us that whenever a client is connecting, they are indeed creating a new for child process to handle that connection. Right. That's the beauty of open source. Whenever in doubt, you always have the source code to refer to. Again, highly recommend you to browse through the code. It's not, uh, it's tricky at first, but over time you'll get used to it. Right. Now, few things. It looks very counterintuitive that, hey, you are spinning up a new process for everything that you are doing. It would be expensive. Yes, it is expensive. But what if two processes that you created needs to talk to each other? How would that work? See, threads have a shared heap, have a same global variable you can access. What about processes? These are separate processes. Global variable concept does not exist now. So which is where you have shared memory, which is shared across multiple processes. And that is kind of a global variable for them. So it's very fascinating. If you're interested into shared memory, how to use it, two system calls or two functions that would help you understand is SHM get and SHM AT. Just go through these functions, try a quick prototype on that. You'll have fun doing it. And if you really want to look at uh, end processes spun up for end clients connected, just fire a query on PG stat activity table. When you, when a client connects to it and you can see the number of processes running there. But this, uh, this takes us to an interesting question. The interesting question is because now my TCP connection was set up to postmaster process. I created a child process for that. How is my child process able to access the TCP connection that is created with the postmaster process? Like processes are supposed to be isolated. How does this work? This is where a bit of OS internals or a bit of OS specifics kick in. 
So whenever a child process is forked, what actually happens is your child process inherits the file descriptors from the parent. Now here, because in because everything is a file, even socket is a file, which means it has a file descriptor. When you fork out a child process, it inherits the file descriptor of the parent. So because it gets the file descriptor of the parent, it can fire the system call using that file descriptor, read, write, close, whatever it wants to do on that. It can fire that. But so, so does parent can do also, like parent can also fire the query or basically do the system call another question? Yes. So Postgres makes a conscious effort that once the backend process is hand off in the post master process, nothing is done with respect to this connection. Everything is handed off to the child. Child process, the backend process is the one that is firing a read system call, write system call, close system call on that to whatever it wants to do on that connection and obviously executing the query and whatnot. Right? This is how your TCP connection is shared between the postmaster and your backend process. But why did Postgres choose to go with a per process user model or per process per client model? Why? It looks very expensive. It is very expensive because spinning up a new process for every client connected, it's catastrophic, which is where typically everybody uses Postgres and puts a proxy behind it like PG Bouncer. And then only they use Postgres because that does the connection pooling for you because you have to minimize the number of connections on the database. So that's why PG Bouncer is such an important library or uh, you run a PG Bouncer process to manage it. So important like RDS proxy. If you are on AWS, check out RDS proxy. Right. So you need a proxy server before it. So PG Bouncer plays that role very well. That's one. And it's very memory consuming because if you do not have that uh, connection pooling done before that, and if you create a large number of connections, your database would stop responding. It happened with main production. That's why I'm so sure about it. So which is where it has its advantage and disadvantage. We spoke about disadvantages, but although expensive, although you need a separate proxy in front of it, what is the key advantage that you get? The key advantage you get is fault tolerance. That if due to any bug in the code, let's say a process crashes due to any reason, any reason, it would not affect the other clients that are executing, whose query is executing and whatnot, they are still working fine. In a multi-threaded setup, if the process crashes due to set fault, all threads within that process crumble. You don't want that to happen. So Postgres is much more resilient, but again, you get some, you lose some, you got this, so you have to give up on additional memory and that additional proxy you need to place so that you can manage your connections well on the database. But by the way, Postgres is reconsidering the decision to go move to a thread based model. There is a massive proposal for that. But again, it's really tough to do it because a lot of code needs to be changed. But yeah, this is how Postgres does its connection management. We went through the source code. We picked again a bit of a source code to understand how, where exactly the fork is happening, how it is happening. And we are sure that whatever we read in the documentation is exactly how it is being done. And yeah. This is all what I wanted to cover in this one. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.